A tragedy is unfolding in Afghanistan. COVID-19 is running rampant in the capital, Kabul. Across the land, security forces are losing the battle with the Taliban. Hospitals are full. US and NATO troops are leaving. Oxygen supplies are running out. What happens when COVID-19 attacks a country at war? Welcome to our COVID-19 special. I'm Monica Johnson Berlin. Thanks for joining us. Now, at the start of the pandemic, we often heard that the coronavirus is some great leveler because it attacks rich and poor alike. But there's a difference. A lot comes down to a country's health care system or the lack of it. This hospital in Kabul has had to close its doors. No more admissions. It's full, as are the city's other main hospitals. COVID-19 patients line the rooms, each struggling to breathe. Kept alive with oxygen, that's in limited supply. The number of patients is high. About 40 to 50 patients who need to be admitted come here every day. But unfortunately, there's no more room for them. With hospitals full, a persistent shortfall of oxygen and a general failure to adopt precautions like masks and social distancing, Afghanistan has entered its worst period yet of the pandemic. For those turned away by doctors, it's a daunting task to get treatment. There's desperate demand for oxygen. Families of the sick gather outside production plants, hoping to get their cylinders refilled before it's too late. My father is sick and may only have oxygen for another hour or two. I've brought a small cylinder here to fill up with oxygen for him. But we have a problem here too because some cars bring 40 to 50 cylinders. Those are filled up very quickly and we won't get our turn. The oxygen crisis in Afghanistan mimics the shortages that nearby India faced weeks ago and some would argue was foreseeable. The acting minister of public health was summoned by lawmakers for an explanation on Monday. The appeal is out for international aid. But supplies are still low. Those who want oxygen now have to pay dearly. I came here to fill my cylinder with oxygen because there's no more room for patients in hospitals. I bought the cylinder at a very high price and it's very difficult because we make an appointment here at 10 o'clock at night but it's not our turn until 10 o'clock the next day. Rights groups have urged the government to procure more oxygen and vaccines. So far, only 2% of the population has received jabs. And years of war have already weakened the healthcare system. That's now one of the world's most unprepared for the pandemic. And for more, I'm joined by Rohula Royan. He's a researcher and lecturer at the Medicine Faculty in, of Katib University in Kabul. He's also head of quality assurance. So very good to have you with us. And uh, we've just seen this report, Kabul's healthcare system overwhelmed by the spread of the virus. What's causing this crisis? Why is Kabul not better prepared? Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, we are, we are, we are, there are many concerns regarding the spread of COVID-19. The infection is uh, spreading rapidly and the data is rising every day. Uh, there are a lack of uh, health facilities all over Afghanistan, especially in Kabul. Uh, beds are full, hospitals are not admitting new patients. And uh, there is a lack of uh, medical personnel. And uh, the, uh, moreover, there is uh, a, a, a great lack of uh, oxygen shortage. Right. The price has uh, increased and the people uh, cannot find uh, oxygen. And uh, another thing is that uh, the poverty is, uh, the poverty and the fighting is another big problem in Afghanistan. Uh, people are poor and they cannot afford to, to, to find, uh, to, to buy oxygen for their patients. 
And uh, in many areas, the fighting is going on. So there are there are, there are not uh, health facilities for for the people for the patient. So the, uh, uh, there is uh, there are great problems uh, all over Afghanistan. So there there are a lot of different factors here at play, uh, but. The Afghan government claims that it spent $200 million on fighting the pandemic. Where did all that money end up? Uh, that's right. Uh, the government claims that uh, $200 million is spent uh, for fighting COVID-19. Uh, but uh, I, in my point of view, uh, we we do not have uh, we don't see the effectiveness of uh, that uh, money which is spent. We see that the people are facing a lots of problem. Oxygen shortage is all over in Afghanistan, especially in Kabul, and uh, vaccination is not uh, going well, and there is not enough vaccine available for the people. And uh, another thing, there are reports of corruption uh, for, uh, for spending of this uh, money. So these are the things that uh, we don't uh, see the, the result. I think it, is, uh, it has not been spent effectively. Right. Uh, maybe one good thing, if you can see anything good in all this, Afghanistan is a very young country. Some 70% of the population there are under 30. Is that a good or a bad thing when it comes to fighting the pandemic? Uh, I think it is a, 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 a good for Afghanistan because more, most of the population is young. But we see that uh, the debt is uh, rising these uh, people. And, uh, the, the COVID-19 is uh, infecting both the young and the, the, the old peoples. But uh, the debt is maybe uh, more in, among the uh, old people than, than young people in Afghanistan. Uh, but is everybody uh, sticking to uh, measures? How do people protect themselves? Are they all wearing masks? Uh, I know that the Ministry of Health has uh, issued a certain protocol. Are people following that? Uh, yes, another another big problem in Afghanistan is that the people are not following the health pro protocols. We see that uh, the people are not wearing masks, they are not following social distances in, Afga in Afghanistan. And, and everywhere when we go out, we see that uh, our two out of uh, ten, maybe they are wearing masks and they are, uh, they are following social distances. So uh, uh, another cause of this uh, spreading, rapid spreading of the uh, COVID-19 is this, this, is this problem, which people are not following the, the, Why not? Uh, the protocol, the health Why protocol. Why not? Uh, uh, there are, um, there are maybe many reasons. Some people are not believing in COVID-19, and uh, some people maybe they don't, they, are, they, they cannot afford uh, to, to, to buy masks. So, so this, there may be another, there may be a, a lot of factors. And uh, the, the government is also not uh, forcing the people. There, there is not uh, a, a fine or uh, another thing which force the people to, to follow the social distance. That right. only the government is, is, is asking the people to, to, to follow health protocols. All right, Rohula Royen there from uh, Katib University in Kabul. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, time now for more of your questions. And as always, Derek Williams is here to answer them. What are the consequences of not receiving the second dose of a vaccine on schedule or not at all? Different vaccines work in different ways. So there isn't really a kind of one size fits all response to this question. But, but one thing is really clear, um, and that's that it's definitely a bad idea to skip the second shot of a two dose regimen completely. Um, experts say that's because it plays an essential role in hyping up your immune system to deal with a, a possible future exposure. Um, the second dose encourages your body to generate particular cells that are able to, to remember SARS-CoV-2, even though you might never have had it. Um, the first dose initiates the response and sets the immune system on high alert, while the second helps cement the memory of the pathogen, providing more powerful protection that's, that's also likely to be a lot more long-term. So although the first dose provides some protection. 
it's really important to follow up with the second one because until you get it, you'll be a lot more vulnerable. The question of whether or not you can delay a second dose is a little more tangled and, and our understanding of what doing that means is still evolving. Um, the rollout in Britain has contributed a lot to what we do know since um, it focused early on getting as many people as possible their first shots, which meant delaying second doses from the recommended three to four week interval to, to up to 12 weeks. And people who received the AstraZeneca vaccine there, the longer interval actually improved immune response. Um, and a recent study still under review implies that it might do so in those vaccinated with Pfizer-BioNTech as well, or, or at least in the elderly. Um, the researchers found that in older people waiting 12 weeks between Pfizer-BioNTech shots instead of three to four weeks caused a more powerful antibody response. Um, in general though, authorities say people need to still be getting second doses after the recommended interval, simply because that's where we have the most robust data, um, the data from trials. And just a reminder how fragile a controlled pandemic situation can be. New Zealand has paused its travel bubble with Australia. That after a traveler from Sydney visited who was infected with COVID-19. Sydney is struggling with a spike in case numbers as local authorities announced a ban on people leaving the city for non-essential reasons. And that's uh, all from me and the team of COVID-19 Special. Thanks for watching.